What's going on guys, Bengal again here coming back at you with another video and today I have my final mock draft. This one will have trades and of course things can very drastically change depending on what information comes out leading to the draft but this is the final one that I'm going to be doing. With that being said though, that's no reason not to subscribe if you're new as there will be a plethora of NFL content coming post draft after the first night. On launch night, I will be streaming on YouTube. So if you're bored for the draft and want someone to watch along with you, I will be live on YouTube on draft night. Make sure to stay tuned. But this is a mock draft. I'm doing it live. I will be doing trades. It's going to be uh, pretty interesting. But the, I like to do these live because I'm thinking, you know, on my toes about what the team could do at that exact moment in that spot. I think it's a little bit more fun to do it this way than to map it out already in advance but i have a pretty good idea for some of these picks and with the first one we're going to be taking joe burrow for the cincinnati Bengals. they get their franchise quarterback he's going to a pretty good receiving core already in tyler boyd aj green so uh, they've got some good players in there and joe burrow who benefits so much and that's not to say that he's not an extremely talented player in his own right if you guys saw my big more my player rankings joe burrow is the number two player in the draft for me uh and it could be even number one if you want to talk uh positional value but joe burrow extremely talented player and the Bengals potentially land their franchise quarterback at number one the redskins i feel like this should probably be a trade spot even though it's not being talked about that at all i think the redskins are an outside shot to take even a tackle here or a quarterback although dwayne haskins i'm convinced is going to be the future franchise quarterback for the redskins i think they'd be foolish to take a new one he looked great down the stretch and i hate the redskins but dwayne haskins uh, he put it together with almost nothing they have terry mclaurin and that's it nothing else they need to land him some weapons might not be a bad idea to protect him with trent williams maybe being traded on draft night or sometime in the near future but we're gonna go chase young it just all signs point to that and even if i think this should go a different direction chase young is my best player in the draft he is a player without flaws really he does everything extremely well that you want for an edge rusher yet you're not going to be asking him to to play coverage and drop back that's just not his role he's a defensive end i mean he's he's a monster this is the first real trade spot for me where i think a trade could happen and probably will i think most likely the lions would be looking to target jeff okuda with this pick and no team behind them for the foreseeable future would be eyeing to take a corner the giants more than likely would not they drafted deandre baker in the first round last year they had a very very strong uh, db class last year in terms of taking a lot of them they just signed james bradbury i don't think they're going to be taking a cornerback in the first round could look you know further down the line but i think this is more than likely a tackle for the giants but the dolphins probably not going to take a qb at, or a cb at number five even though it'd be a worthwhile addition to their secondary they signed uh, Byron Jones they have Xavier Howard they don't really need to draft a corner the Chargers have a plethora of corners I'm gonna keep throwing that word out and they signed Chris Harris Jr. they don't need cornerbacks the first real team that could take a corner is the Panthers at number seven I'm gonna have the Chargers trading up to number three with the Detroit Lions okay so these are the trade details I'm working out we're gonna have pick number three and number 149 from the Lions for number six 71 and 112 from the Chargers that trade should be going through here and the chargers have accepted the offer so the chargers now pick at number three chargers on the clock now at number three this is going to be a quarterback if this were to happen uh and i don't think it's going to be Tua. i think it's going to be justin herbert i think the dolphins try uh maybe trade up to this spot as well and they don't do it i think the chargers move up and they take their quarterback of the future in justin herbert now the reason that i think this could be justin herbert over tua is i think depending on the organization they could view them as similar prospects in terms of potential ceiling even though Tua is a better quarterback today they could view herbert as a better quarterback in the future and here's the biggest thing is herbert doesn't have all these injury concerns that tua has i think that's what it comes down to you don't want to trade up and invest such a high pick in a quarterback if he's not going to be on the field so justin herbert to the chargers he is the second quarterback off the board and that has my favorite team the new york giants at number four i think this is another trade down spot but dave gettleman talked about how he wants to get a trade done in advance but the thing is that no team's going to want to trade up to number four prior to knowing what happens at number three if there's a trade up because you'd be trading up for a quarterback and there have been now some rumors about the giants being interested in justin herbert 
he's even off the board right now. In my opinion, the Giants are absolutely 100% going to go offensive tackle with this pick. I want Isaiah Simmons. I think he's a game changer on the defense side of the ball that the Giants have not had in quite some time. But the Giants uh, are invested in their front seven consistently. I think there's a, this is an outside shot to be Derek Brown. I like Derek Brown as a player. I think he's very good. I think it'd be an absolutely disastrous pick for the Giants to take here. Um, IDL is not one of their biggest needs at all. If the Giants were to take Derek Brown, another nose tackle, I would uh, I would be super, super upset. I think this is going to be an offensive tackle. It's not the most exciting pick, but there is, in my opinion, the best offensive tackle in the class, obviously, on the board, as an offensive tackle is not gone yet. I think that's Jedrick Wills. He's the most pro-ready, uh, the most uh, fitting day one starter in the draft. Currently ranked at number 12 on their big board. I don't care. He's the best tackle in the draft. Value him more than worse, more than Becton, more than Andrew Thomas. And the Giants take Jedrick Wills at number four. Now, I think this could be Makai Becton even, even though he tested positive for a diluted sample, which is not the same as testing positive for any type of drug per se, but it's potentially an effort to hide it. So that's what a diluted sample is. Um, this has happened before. Guys have slid a little bit in the draft. This could be Andrew Thomas. This could be Tristan Wirfs. I think it's going to be Jedrick Wills, though. I think he's the best tackle in the draft. So the Giants take him at number four. Dolphins at number five. They've seen Herbert go off the board. They saw Burrow go off the board. This is a team that probably is in the market for a quarterback with this pick. And maybe their favorite one in the draft fell to them at number five. Again, you have some injury concerns, but we're going to have the Dolphins taking a quarterback at number three in Tua Tungo Vailoa. Lions back on the clock, traded back from three. And the player that they want, still probably on the board in Jeff Okuda, and he is headed to Detroit. He's going to be a nice cornerback pairing with Desmond Trufant. Panthers on the board at number seven. I think they're very pleased with the way this has worked out as well as they get Isaiah Simmons, who can be a chess piece for their defense, play some weak side linebacker. I don't really think he's suited more so to be on the inside. Could play some strong safety for them. Could play some nickel corner money backer whatever they need him to do i think he's capable of doing it i think he should probably have a more defined role as a rookie and then kind of as he transitions and gets used to the nfl give him some new responsibilities because uh, throwing you know all that on his plate as a rookie could uh backfire a little bit but isaiah simmons is a stud i think he projects to be a great long-term starter in the future now we have the cardinals at number eight this is an interesting pick they got out they went out and got deandre hopkins in the draft or not in the draft with it with a trade and now they have a high pick in the draft at number eight probably not going to take a receiver here even though all of the best ones are still available this is probably a tackle if they you know don't look to trade down i think there are going to be teams looking to trade up for a receiver i don't think it's necessarily at this pick i think the cardinals are just going to say we'll cut our losses and go with a tackle here and that is going to be tristan Wirfs out of iowa has the ability to play right tackle right away that's kind of their need right now got to protect kyler murray you already have your blind side protector gave him a nice big contract i think it was like four years 53 mil for dj humphreys now tristan Wirfs is going to be protecting on that right side jaguars at number nine the jaguars are an interesting team because i think this is a team that could look to potentially even trade one of their first round picks and yannick and gakwe to either move up in the draft or just trade Yannick Ngakwe in another pick for a higher pick uh, or a different pick, something along those lines. But this is an interesting spot for the for the Jags at number nine. I think it would almost be too tough for them to turn down Derek Brown at this spot. So that's exactly what it's going to be. And that leaves the Cleveland Browns at number 10. They need tackles so desperately. They have the top uh, or two of the top four available in the draft, depending on the order. I've seen so many different rankings for these tackles. Uh, if you saw my big board, obviously you know I went with Jedrick Wills as my number one, and then I went uh, Becton, Wirfs, Thomas. This is an interesting spot for the Browns. They need help at left tackle more so than the right side, but both of these two tackles available are left tackles. Makai Becton would occasionally move to the right side. Andrew Thomas was pretty much always their left tackle. Um, I can't say that he ever played on the right side with Isaiah Wilson there, but Andrew Thomas is a pure left tackle. Becton has a very, very high ceiling. Thomas is not going to get you hurt. What would they probably opt to do? In the past, maybe they'd go for the potential player, but is it a better move to go with a smart pick and take 
the better player today, maybe, and Andrew Thomas. I think they're going to go with Mekhi Becton. They're going to they're going to stick to what they usually do. And now it's the Jets at number eleven. This is a weird spot because Caleb on Chasen's here. They need edge, and Chason is a very very good edge rusher. A wide receiver. All three of the best receivers in the class are still available. Or do they take a tackle? I know I had Becton uh, potentially falling, but I don't think he gets out of the top ten there uh, with the Browns on the board. The worst already gone. Does Thomas go here at number 11 to the Jets, or does he slide a little bit more? I think the Jets say, hey, we have our pick of the litter here in terms of wide receiver. Do they take a receiver with this pick? Oh, man. This could even be a trade-down spot. The Bucks could go tackle. The Broncos could go tackle. I might have the 49ers moving up to number 11 here. All right, so the trade is going to be the Raiders trading 12 and 91. I've changed my mind. I'm going to have the Raiders moving up. The 49ers just don't really have the amount of draft picks that I think it would it would take in order to land this pick. So the Raiders, in efforts to make sure the 49ers can't trade up, I know it's a, it's a weird trade. They're only moving up one spot, but they're trading 12 and 91. Let me let me rechange the details of this because they're only moving up one spot. Um, it might be 12 and 91 and they acquire let's do 12 and 12 and 81 for 11 and a fourth so no we're gonna do we're gonna, we're gonna go back to 91 so 12 and 91 for 11 and uh 120 for the jets so uh, raiders just moving up one spot and then dropping back about 30 uh in the third or fourth round range so uh, the Jets should be accepting that, and they do. And the Raiders are on the clock at number 11, making sure that the 49ers can't jump them. And they take a receiver, and that receiver is going to be the one, presumptively, that the 49ers would be after at pick number 13. And that is going to be Henry Ruggs, first receiver off the board. We know in the past the Raiders love their speed, guys. Ruggs is a really, really talented player. Uh, he's a lot more than just a burner. Good route runner, good hands, uh, great body control. Henry Ruggs is uh, definitely the complete package at receiver. He's my third receiver in the class. But uh, some of these guys are so close. Judy, Ruggs, Lamb, that it, it's tough to pick it in order. But uh, Ruggs at number 11 to the Raiders. Leaves the Jets, who just moved back one spot. And this is going to be the spot that they take Andrew Thomas. Uh, they probably wouldn't let the Raiders trade up if they were going to take a receiver. So in this scenario, the Jets take Andrew Thomas at number 12. 49ers now on the clock at number 13. They have their pick of what receiver they prefer. I think this is going to be C.D. Lamb or Jerry Judy. And in this case, we will go with... I, I just think Jerry Judy is the better player. How does he fit in with the 49ers, though? I think this is going to be a player that's reminiscent of Julio Jones, even though he doesn't have the size or the freak athleticism that Julio has. But um, Kyle Shanahan, of course, 49ers, Falcons connection there, takes Jerry Judy. And now the Dolphins are up at number 14. I think Javon Kinlaw is going to go in this range. But would the 49ers opt to take a defensive tackle over an offensive tackle? Or Caleb on chase on? I think they actually would. I'm going to give them Javon Kinlaw here. Uh, Kinlaw is a really, really good player. He is my defensive tackle one. The way I got to that is I just prefer someone that's going to penetrate at a higher level. I know that's very funny when I say that, but he is an interior pass rushing threat the way Derek Brown's more of a pocket pusher and he'll hold blocks and and that's his type of pressure that he'll bring is pushing the, the pocket back and collapsing the pocket. Kinlaw is someone that can be disruptive in his own right by getting to the quarterback and I just value that a little bit more. But Kinlaw is going to the Bucks there at number 14. Broncos at number 15. I think this is going to be C.J. Henderson. They need cornerback, and C.J. Henderson is a very, very talented corner. And he, they take him just before the Falcons can. Falcons might be a trade-up spot to number 14 to maybe take C.J. Henderson before the Broncos. And then Kinlaw would probably either go with either 15 or 16 or 17 to the Cowboys. I think Kinlaw is too good of a player to fall that much. But the Falcons are up at number 16. 
I think this is a pretty obvious edge spot for K. Levon Chase on. So I'm not going to hesitate, and that's exactly the Falcons end up taking. At number 17, we have the Dallas Cowboys. And somehow, they have the opportunity to take C.D. Lamb. I think this is a pretty dream spot for them. Dream scenario. And C.D. Lamb, unfortunately, would be the newest member of the Dallas Cowboys. I hate that. I, I love C.D. Lamb as a player, even though I hate Oklahoma. And I'm still probably going to love C.D. Lamb as a player, even though I hate the Cowboys. That's just kind of a fitting fit there. And uh, the Dolphins are back on the clock at number 18 here. This is another interesting spot. I, I feel like I've had Josh Jones going here forever. But I don't know. Is he really the best fit? I think I think they could invest in um, so many different positions due to the strength of their roster as a whole uh, being not very strong. This could be a good trade back spot for the Dolphins. Now, who would be looking to trade up and who would they be trading up for? This could be the Eagles up to 18. I don't, but why would the Eagles do that? Would the Jags take a receiver? Maybe at number 20. The Raiders probably would not. That's probably Patrick Queen there. Actually, it probably isn't Patrick Queen. They signed Nick Kwiatkowski and... Corey Littleton I'm not sure that they would take a linebacker in fact they probably would not the Jaguars might but they have Miles Jack he signed a long-term extension they brought in Joe Schobert and if they bring Telvin Smith back and I only say that it's not contract related he just took a year off from football last year they wouldn't really need a linebacker and who'd they sign they signed um the Packers inside linebacker Jake Jake Ryan. Nope, Jake Ryan is headed to the Ravens, actually. But he was on the Jags. Interesting. I think I'm just going to give him Josh Jones again. It's just one of those picks that just kind of makes sense for them. So, Josh Jones headed to Miami at pick number 18. And now, I was thinking a lot about this pick for the Raiders. I really was. And I'm like, what would they possibly need at this spot? They took receiver. Now, receiver is still... A minor concern for them at this point yeah they have Tyrell Williams they have Hunter Renfro who's kind of a slot guy obviously they have Henry Ruggs now in this scenario what would they take at this spot wouldn't be linebacker because they address that in free agency heavily would they go cornerback here definitely a possibility but with the way this cornerback class has shaped up the top two are off the board and then there's kind of a substantial drop off would they take Jeff Gladney or Christian Fulton at 19 I'm not entirely convinced and then when you look at the interior of the defensive line, which is a need for them, probably not something they take as well. With Ross Blacklock on the board, Neville Gallimore, um, those are guys that they could probably target a little bit later. Not really a point in spending number 19 overall on them. So then I get to thinking, what would the Raiders do at this point? And I think the Raiders would look to shock the world and take a quarterback. And that quarterback's going to be Jordan Love. I think there's a substantial drop-off after him again at the quarterback position Jordan Love is a quarterback that I think John Gruden would absolutely love to have and especially in Tampa Bay we saw that he's not afraid to draft quarterbacks at a crazy rate and of course he's not exactly calling the shots there with Mike Mayock as their GM but the Raiders saying that they're and I know I know that what they said we're going to address this and I'm paraphrasing here but they they didn't quite say they were committed to Derek Carr but something along those lines I think that could be a potential smokescreen because you could see a lot of these teams looking to target quarterback like the Patriots at 23, you know, like maybe the Dolphins if they don't go to a, you know, like the Packers at 30, maybe even uh, probably teams moving up from the top of the second round at, at that point. Uh, maybe the Saints at 24. Teddy Bridgewater is no longer a player that they have. Who's their quarterback after Drew Brees? So I think the Raiders are an outside shot to say, hey, Jordan Love has too much potential. Derek Carr is maybe not our quarterback of the future. Moving to a new stadium, new city. Derek Carr is coming up to the end of his contract. We're going to take Jordan Love and we're going to develop him for a couple years and then not renew Derek Carr's contract and run with Jordan Love as our quarterback for the future. I think that'd be a really, really wise move for the Raiders for the future. I think Jordan Love has a ton of potential and I think the value might be too much for them to pass him up at 19. So I know that's a weird one, 
but uh, I definitely wouldn't I wouldn't mind that for the Raiders. I think that's a solid choice. And now we have the Jaguars at number 20. This is another interesting situation where they took interior defensive line in the top 10 in Derek Brown. Their team has completely fallen apart. They're going to be losing Yannick Ngakwe. They traded away Calais Campbell. They just take best player available here, and they try to rebuild their team. They're likely going to be trading Leonard Fournette. Could be trading Andrew Norwell. They've traded everybody. So this Jags team is is so, so bad for the future. They traded away Nick Foles. I'm not convinced Minshew Mania is the solution down there. But what would they take here? It really just would be best player available. Uh, I don't think they'd be necessarily inclined to take a safety at this spot. We might give him a cornerback here, and I think that corner might be Christian Fulton out of LSU. And um, they trade away Jalen Ramsey, obviously, last year, but that's not so recent. But Christian Fulton to the Jags at 20, leaving the Eagles to go Justin Jefferson at number 20. Vikings are another team that has not exactly fallen apart, but they've lost some big pieces. Might be moving Anthony Harris on draft night. Of course, they lost Linval Joseph. They cut him. You know, they've lost a, a lot of players. Stefan Diggs was traded to Buffalo. Almost too many to name at this point. The Vikings are in a weird situation for Cap, but they're still a team that's going to compete to win the NFC North. What would the Vikings do at this spot? Some of the top receivers are off the board. Receiver is a need for them. Outside of Adam Thielen, there really is not much. There is not much. So what would they do at this spot? Interior offensive line is a need. Cornerback is a need. Wide receiver is a need. What would they take here? Now, I think this would either be Jeff Gladney or maybe even A.J. Terrell. I think A.J. Terrell has Vikings written all over him. Or receiver. This is a really strong receiver class. Who would the Vikings take here if they were to go receiver? I think it would be... I think Rager makes a ton of sense. I don't know. I think maybe the Vikings go a scheme fit here. And that is going to be taking Jalen Johnson out of Utah. Uh, has exactly what Mike Zimmer's profile usually is, which is uh, length at the cornerback position, size length. Um, and that's what he offers. Physical guy that uh, would fit in it really really well with the vikings there at number 22 so that's who we're taking a cornerback have the new england patriots at number 23 this is probably a spot where they may have considered quarterback in the past depending on who was there but tom brady's gone jarrett Sidham, maybe not your franchise quarterback there maybe he is who knows we'll have to see how that develops but i think this is your tour gross matos uh young edge rusher with a ton of upside Patriots lend themselves an upgrade on the defense side of the ball. They lost a little bit there. Like someone that played an edge role at times was Kyle Van Noy. He's headed down to Miami. Patriots look to replace him. Vikings at number 25. But before then, we have the Saints at number 24. This could be a receiver. They have Michael Thomas. They signed Emmanuel Sanders. They could be looking for a receiver here. However, in a deep receiver class, you don't need to feel pressure to necessarily take one here at 24. This is probably a linebacker, and you have the choice between two, Patrick Queen or Kenneth Murray. Now, I'm a big Patrick Queen guy. Kenneth Murray plays in between the tackles uh, considerably better than Patrick Queen, although I think Queen can look to develop in that area. Uh, tackles pretty well, is incredibly instinctive, and is the best zone linebacker in this class best cover linebacker now kenneth murray who has similar athleticism to patrick queen isn't quite the coverage specialist that patrick queen is which would they prefer someone that can cover or someone that can make tackles in between the tackles and i think we might give him kenneth murray here even though i value patrick queen more as a player vikings back at number 25 i would say that this is probably a receiver or a defensive tackle or an offensive tackle this could be where austin jackson goes um, this is this is a really interesting spot here for the Vikings. I feel like AJ Terrell has Vikings written all over him. Excuse me as I punch my mic there. But I think wide receiver might be uh, too much for the Vikings to pass up. Now, there are so many receivers that I think could end up going the first round. I think T. Higgins could be a first round player. I think Michael Pittman Jr. could sneak into the first round. I think KJ Hamler could sneak into the first round. I think Brandon Ayuk could be a first round player. Jalen Rager, first round player. Denzel Mims could sneak into the first round. There's a lot of potential here for the Vikings. 
We're going to give him Jalen Rager, uh, one of my favorite receivers in the class. Great body control. Like you, you look at his size and you say that's not really uh, an incredibly big target, but he can play like it in the air. He's only five foot eleven, but has incredible deep speed. He is maybe the best overall deep threat in the class, up there with Henry Ruggs. Rager is an absolute stud. Uh, pretty good hands too. Just some inconsistencies with drops at times, but overall pretty good hands and fantastic body control. That is, I think, one of Rigger's best overall traits is body control. So the Vikings get themselves a stud receiver to go alongside Adam Thielen in Minnesota. And the Dolphins are back on the clock for the third time here at number 26. Now, this could be a running back spot for them, although Jordan Howard was someone that was signed in free agency. Do they take the best safety available? Let's give them Xavier McKinney. Someone with some positional flexibility maybe reminds them of Mika Fitzpatrick, even though they are not really comparable players in any way. But McKinney has the versatility to play in the box uh, pretty often. So maybe they value that quite a bit. And Xavier McKinney goes to the Dolphins at 26. Seahawks at number 27. Now, I think this may have been edge in the past, but look at all the edge rushers off the board. Gross Matos, Chase on, and Chase Young. Who do they take here? I think this is uh, a surprise spot for an interior defensive lineman, and I think that's going to be Ross Blacklock out of TCU. Seahawks get themselves an interior disruptor. Now the Ravens at number 28. I think they are thrilled with the way that this draft has worked out for them as they get an opportunity to land a stud piece to their linebacking core, and that is Patrick Queen, best cover linebacker in the class. Now, what about Isaiah Simmons? What about Isaiah Simmons? I'm not sure that he's a pure linebacker as much as Patrick Queen is. Simmons is a stud, but he doesn't really profile as well on the inside. Patrick Queen, and it's not like they ever could have gotten Isaiah Simmons anyway, but Patrick Queen is the best pure coverage linebacker who is only a linebacker. Titans now at number 29. They're probably pretty disappointed about all the edge rushers going off the board and maybe not being able to sign Clowney not getting any of these top guys. I think this is an edge rusher. I think AJ Epineza fits so well for the Titans. They lost Jarrell Casey. They traded him to Denver for a sixth or a seventh round pick. Epineza would fit his role so incredibly well. He's someone that probably isn't an edge rusher so much as he is a 3-4 defensive end, and that is exactly the role that he would replace Jarrell Casey in in Tennessee. Titans get a perfect scheme fit for them. I could see that happening all day. Packers now at number 30 interesting spot for them um people have talked about an outside shot for a quarterback here i think this is either a tackle or a receiver what would they prefer tackle or receiver because even though they signed ricky wagner i'm not sure that he's their long-term solution there they lost brian bulaga they'd probably wait to go tackle uh, in the draft maybe even look to address the defensive side of the ball they lost Blake Martinez they lost Kyler Fackrell and while I'm not so high on Blake Martinez even as a Giants fan they could look to replace inside linebacker probably look to do so in the second round or third round I think this is probably a wide receiver spot and it's which receiver would they prefer I think Brandon Ayuk makes the absolute most sense there for the Packers at number 30 uh an absolute playmaker with the ball in his hands a really nice compliment to Devontae Adams Packers land a stud. Now the 49ers at number 31. Their secondary was exposed viciously in the playoffs. Uh, Richard Sherman's age showed. They don't really have much outside of him. And even though their defense was so great the entire year, I think they could definitely invest in a cornerback or a safety in the first round. Now that's either Grant Delpit that is potentially even Antoine Winfield Jr. I actually like that a lot for them. He's someone who's uh, reminiscent of what they probably thought Jimmy Ward could turn into. And Antoine Winfield Jr. makes a ton of sense as an addition to this defense, as someone that could eventually replace Jimmy Ward, someone that can play some corner, someone that can play some safety. And Antoine Winfield Jr. sneaks into the first round. Chiefs at number 32 with the last pick of the first round. Sorry, Grant Delpit, I don't have you in the first, buddy, because we're going cornerback. Which one do I think is going to go? Because all four of these guys could definitely be first-round picks. Jeff Gladney, Noah Igbenogany, A.J. Terrell, Trayvon Diggs, I think are all first-round players, potentially, or all players that could go in the first round. Which one do I think the Chiefs will go with? 
I don't know actually. That's 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 a tough question because all these guys have different um, different strengths. I think we're gonna go with maybe the best day one starter for a team that's looking to win now, and that might be Jeff Gladney out of TCU. Two two uh, three TCU players in the first round. The two three, Blacklock, Rager, and Jeff Gladney. Yep. Interesting the way that this draft worked out, but that is going to be my final mock draft with trades. I didn't really do too many trades down the stretch because um, they're so difficult to predict. And I was trying to think, you know, what team would move back into the first for what player? And trades will certainly happen in this 22 to 32 range, but I couldn't really think of any. Didn't want to force it. But that is my final mock draft. Subscribe if you're new, like the video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.